Hey everybody, it is I, Super Paul Games, and welcome back to uh, Dating Sim with the Colonel. The Colonel's about to walk us home after class. The ghost kid is like, whoa, for real, come on! Get out of here, ghost kid. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building is taking on an in another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Hold me, Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Mmm, those mashed potatoes. You made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They, they were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me <laughs> why I became so damn passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that I find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. I just met him today. That's creepy fast. Colonel, Colonel Sanders? Yes, delicious dick. Mm. There's, there's something I need to tell you. <laughs> Hold it right there. You murdered a kid with your shit cooking. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world. The one, the greatest show the world's ever seen. Oh, feelings. And ever since that day, I've been working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights. Do you lift, bro? Like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. When I wish upon a star, go to drive a car, go far. Uh, no, 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 I, you, you, shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that you're cooking literally killed a man, Van Van? You can't prove that! Hmm. I saw you kill that man. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him, we're talking about me! Me, 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 me! I'm the hero. Spork Monster's here to fight Hero! Yeah. Creepy. I think I left the fridge open on later, nerds! You're, you're the nerd! How dare you threaten me? Yes, I was letting my on my guard in connection with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid of me, cause I'm a monster. Oh! Is he rhyming on purpose? Cause that totally rhymed. I'm sure I read it 100% right. Was that a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Attack. I love the final, uh, Final Fantasy flavor. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Attack again! You decide to go on the attack. It worked last time, right? Cook with Love. When do I get to do a summon? Cook with Love does one damage. Spork Monster will not forget this. He's feeling really threatened by your attack. He focuses his mashed mind and draws in their energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? I guess we'll defend ones. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You hold your head between your hands and mutter, Oh, this is not happening. This is not happening. The best defense. The denial. Spork monsters, no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. You use you ten... You, you till the town style. You take two damage from the attack. You take much more damage. You're not going to survive the battle. Uh, I should have attacked. Cook with love again. Spork monsters oozing cheese sauce under the lawn of the quad. I wonder who's going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, pork spork monster prepares for his ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Vile villain, your reign. Oh, wrong voice. Vile villain, <laughs> your reign of terror stops here. You get him, you chicken wizard. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. <laughs> Pot pie pinch, power pinch. Pot by Power Pinch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You you saved me, Colonel Sanders. Ninja Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Spare the wretched beast. 
you manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I won't be back like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells from the Dark Chicken, with a golden chicken on its cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name is signed out is to Borco. Hmm. Borco, hmm. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. No! Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He's going to know I'm into K-pop. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't even know if you could have made it without him. What a guy! You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single world. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. Not creepy at all. In your dreamland, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Zzz. Oh, Ashley was there. Get out of here, ghost. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? And then there was the secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh, oh love? That means Ashley will never make good food because she doesn't love me anyone. It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You up, you meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Uh oh, Miriam. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Oh, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be um, I think I might like Clank. She's got the hots for the hot pressure cooker. I uh, like him, like, like, like. I want his babies! I mean, I know it sounds like I'm moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him, like him, like him. We got talking after class, and he's a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. And the things he puts into him? Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? I kind of doubt that. No, but that does mean complete sense, I mean. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at the school. He didn't even go to. And he was also the convertible that he rode himself in in front of the homecoming parade. Are you high? I think maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation there, Miriam. Either way, might it be, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. How do you know he's not a pressure cooker player? Ah, uh, you and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, you're a thing now. We're definitely connected yesterday. Ah, sure you did, loser. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. I am great. You have an idea of how to improve that, prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, then why did he tell me one of the secret ingredients? Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. Uh, a secret ingredient. Is that there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So, um, uh, so this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. Miriam, you live in your own world, and that's okay. This can't be good. He told me about his passion, passion for spices, secret spices. Wait, did you do the colonel? The man even gave me some, some to show me what it meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own 
What dirty thing did the colonel make you do? Please, Miriam, don't tell me! So I filled my suitcase with him and brought him home! He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived! Later, when I cooked with him, a very strange feeling came over me! I became a woman! And the flavor was unlike anything I ever tasted! I'm confused now. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever! Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. I bet that was the Colonel. Well, I'm definitely not going to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please! Oh, God! It would mean the world to me. No one know it. had to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you do? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? I don't want to lie to her. I don't like that I can't tell her the truth. I want to tell her the truth but not tell her. Be like, I can't tell you. I'll make up a fake ingredient. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about... It was Eye of Newt. I know. Sounds like some kind of witch's potion. But what can you do? Witches these days. Eye of Newt. Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing. And you figure that you've satisfied... Oh, I've satisfied her curiosity. And she moves on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. Do we ruin... Is she talking to the colonel? Does she not realize this, Sim? Did we ruin chicken forever? A wind rushes and cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving on school on a horse. Of course. Let's run to him. You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and the Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you up under the back of the stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. Oh, this is not going as out. <laughs> However, your sudden movement surprised the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. Now I got brain damage. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, you see a vision. Oh, delicious dick. I am here to deliver you a message. All right, ghost student. Not this guy. It's important you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end, so no, it's serious. I have been trapped in the realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And that name is... Oh, fuck. Before we continue, you suddenly awake. Oh, jeez. Go, student. You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused... Chicken tendering to me? He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is it just his natural seasoned musk? Ew. Oh, your delicious strong smell woke me up. Lean it? No, we're gonna compliment... The craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. Oh, fuck it, we're going for a kiss. Whoa, 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 you've known him for a day. Are you really sure? I guess you must be. You put your arms around Colonel Sanders' neck and pull him in for a kiss. But he turns his face, you awkwardly kiss his ear. You can feel him shudder. Too soon, you clearly mistook his compassion for love. Ignore this compassion boner I have. Your soul crawls inside of itself and you instantly die of embarrassment. Well, that's a harsh ending. All right, this time we're going to compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. Maybe you shouldn't be riding a horse to school, and maybe you shouldn't be riding up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here. Probably me. But one thing is sure, the Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes! Can you nail some under my feet? Oh, I mean, I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face and gave me brain damage. That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. Maybe I could have my horse kick you some more. Are you into that, Colonel Sanders? But that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way, they're hiding. You know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, summoning a demon bad? We try to get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder or under Ashley's skirt, but he sees you coming. Oh, there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. I don't want to handle any of that. Leave it alone. 
Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? She called me honey! I'm gonna act like I'm not interested, but I'm really gonna try and take a closer look. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van muttering something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. Maybe they're playing D&D. Can I play? I want to be a thief. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. <clears throat> it's time for class? No. I would never say this in real life. That was the opposite of the kind of student I was. This is the student I would make fun of. <clears throat> it's time for class. And you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. That's the kind of thing a moron would be like, Teacher, you didn't give us homework. Now you've upset them. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? Yeah, I could make some sexy rules for us. Oh, that was stupid. Why did I say that? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. You can eat me, Van Van. Being the best chef in the world makes more than just culinary skills. It takes more even. It takes creativity. It takes panache. What about pancakes? And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. I never tried cooking with evil. You finally get, what if it's better than cooking with love? I'm sorry, Colonel Sanders. Evil burger is so good. You finally get a look at what it was that they were hiding. You instantly recognize it. It's a book just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book I found last night in the quad. Do you like my quads, Ashley? Ashley immediately elbows Van Van who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a fair family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice, I think she might like me. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got pop pinned to the wall. What? And they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. He probably likes that. We're playing, ha! Huh? Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Hey, Ashley, is it time for as? Beep, beep. Whoa, don't say such things about my friend Maridam Clank. D don't talk about it. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Ah, oh, hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything except for hurt you. Destroy family. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. What about one that sits? Womp womp. Now your mother was a stand mixer. Where it burnt. This thing could. This thing has got boiling hot oil in it. I wouldn't piss it off, Van Van. Van Van jumps to attack Clink, but Clink shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I've got something you can blow a whistle. Dick, I think it must be over me. But I'm not interested in either of them. Oh, is she interested in me? Ashley's tone's completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know this is a ruse, right? Meh. Gentlemen, start your inch. I mean, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or, or don't, whatever. I ain't your mama. Honestly, what do I care? I got a lofty career aspirations to focus on. You ain't gonna pull me down. Maybe I can help you with your business plan? Just then Sprinkle arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. A professor dog. Students, students, please take your seats. Where am I taking it, doggy? Huh? Huh? Oh. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing the car around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tiny. I make very poor life decisions. Me too, Professor. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. Okay. Sprinkle stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the secret scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. Professor, you'll get fired. This is purely inappropriate. Urgh. Down, boy. Down! Off topping! Are you like Dr. Strangelove, Colonel Sanders? Well, are you a colonel in a different military? Have you done horrible things? That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Oh, sorry, I got a little carried away. 
Oh, licking students! After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, our doggy poo will review global history of my favorite foe, the chicken! You want to pay attention to the lesson? Truly you do. No, I don't. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence... Hey, I got a Declaration of Independence today. My dad was like, hey, you want a little one? Thanks! Now I'm independent! It was a chicken who first signed their name. You can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, delicious dick! Yes. Naturally, this appears to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? I want the pepper. Mm. A brightly colored pepper steps out, stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for that heat. Uh-oh. Well, why are we tripping balls so much in the school? The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip, trip, trip through the universe. We need that meme video with, like, the emperor flying through the universe. My friend, ooh. This guy again. I am here to give you an important message. Ooh. Oh. A-E-I and you. Sometimes why? You must avenge my death. And fulfill your destiny, Emperor. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying, fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I'm sorry, I think I got some spice stuck in my throat. You want a ghost stick in your throat? What? What? It's fine, I'll work through. <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> the prophecy... <laughs> You must... You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. I gotta say your name three times. Oh, man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. Yeah, Pepper was the last of its kind on Earth. And now it's gone forever. Why did you put it in front of me? Why? Why didn't you get the seeds from it or some shit? What if I poop in a bag later? Maybe a seed survived? You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. Ah, oh, we all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. All right. Well, everybody, that's going to be the end of this episode. I'll see you all next time when we munch up some lunch. What a delicious crunch.